Thank you for being here. My name is Roger Soberanis. I am from the Chair of Computer Aided Medical Procedures at the Technical University of Munich. And today I will present our work in uncertainty based graph convolutional neural networks for segmentation refinement. The segmentation of medical structures is an important step in many computer aided medical procedures. Currently, deep convolutional neural networks have set the state of art in this task. However, this is still a challenging problem, mainly because the high similarity between the tissue of interest and the surrounding tissue, and also because of interpatient variability in organs, for example, the pancreas. This can lead to errors in the segmentation. For example, when we compare the prediction with the reference in the figure here, we can see a group of false positives indicated in red and also a group of false negatives indicated in white together with the true positive indicated in green. This problem can be addressed by adding a refinement step, usually at the end of the inference process. Segmentation refinement has also been applied as an intermediate step in some supervised learning problem. One usual algorithm used for refined segmentation is conditional random fields, or CRF, and some of the characteristics of these algorithms are that retraining the network is not necessary. Second, all the information that is required to refine the segmentation comes from the CNN's output itself. And it's usual to build this refinement model using the network prediction, the spatial and the intensity relationship. And some question we could make here is what additional information could be useful for refining segmentation? We know that some elements of the prediction could be incorrect, but we don't know which elements are actually incorrect. If we can have an estimation of which elements are potentially incorrect or which elements are potentially correct, we can include this information in the refinement process to help the refinement algorithm to give better results. The question here is, how can we estimate the correctness of the CNN's predictions? To answer this question, we can go to uncertainty estimation methods, for example, the Monte Carlo dropout strategy that can be applied to any convolutional neural network with obtaining the architecture and also within retraining, with, without retraining the network. And that also has shown utility for estimating the quality of the segmentation of a model and also to highlight potential errors in the segmentation. Now that we can use the uncertainty to estimate this potential error, the next question to address is how can we include this information in the refinement pipeline? And for this, we model the refinement problem as a graph convolutional learning problem. In this case, we construct a partially labeled graph using the uncertain information, and then we use the high certain elements of this graph to train a GCN, a graph convolutional neural network. Finally, we use this GCM to refine the In general, we propose a two-step refinement process for the single organ segmentation problem in city volumes. The first step of this process is the uncertainty analysis, and the second step consists in create a partially labeled graph using this uncertainty analysis, and then train a GCN to, that will be used at the end to refine the segmentation of the network. Now, let's take a closer look look to all these components of our proposal. The first step is for a particular CNN train for segmentation. Could be uh, for two-dimensional data or could also be for three-dimensional data. The first step is to use the Monte Carlo drop-up strategy to compute the expectation of this model for one particular input. With this expectation, we compute the entropy of the model and we use the entropy to represent the uncertainty of this network to one particular input. In the figure here, we can see some examples for the expectation and for the entropy for one particular input slice. The final step of our uncertainty analysis is to define which elements are potentially incorrect. For this, we thresholded the estimated uncertainty to get the binarized uncertainty of the model. This binarized map indicates the high uncertainty voxels of the prediction for the CNN. As I mentioned before, the segmentation refinement is given by the output of a graph convolutional neural network. This graph convolutional neural network is constructed or trained 
on a graph built based on the uncertainty analysis. Now we will take a closer look to how we construct this partially labeled graph used to train the GCN. The elements that are employed to construct this graph are first the original input volume, second the prediction of the CNM, and also we will need the expectation and the uncertainty computed from our uncertainty analysis. Each vote cell is considered to be a node in the graph. Each node is also represented by its intensity, expectation, and entropy, and we use these three components as features for each node. The labels are set according to this rule here. We use the binarized entropy, UB. If this UB is equal to zero, then that means that the particular voxel has a low uncertainty, and we will keep the original prediction of the CNN for these cases. If this binarized uncertainty is one, that means that for that particular voxel, we have a very high uncertainty. And in these cases, we will mark the node as unlabeled. The next step is to create connectivity between the nodes. And for this, first, for a particular node, for example, the node marked in black here, we create a connection between this node and its six perpendicular neighbors in the current slice, previous and next one. However, using only this connectivity, the strategy has a problem. And the problem is that all these nodes could be actually inside the high uncertainty regions with no information coming from low uncertainty points to use during the training of the graph convolution neural network. To alleviate this problem, we also decide to include k random connections across the entire graph in order to bring long range information coming from high certainty points in the graph. Regarding weighting, we use similarity in expectation given by the diversity. And also we keep the similarity in intensity and position as used in the conditional random field refinement algorithm. With all this, we have defined a partially labeled graph that can be used to train in a, super, in, in a semi-supervised way a graph convolutional neural network. We can use different methods from the state of R, for example, the method proposed by Thomas Keefe to train a GCN model in partially labeled data. And once we have trained this model, we use this GCN to evaluate the entire graph and obtain the refined segmentation from this. We test our framework on a two-dimensional unit trained on axis slices. We perform the uncertainty analysis as described before, using a dropout rate of dot three and considering 20 samples. The GCN model is a two-layer network with 32 features in the hidden layer and one single output. We train the GCN in all our experiments for 200 epochs with a learning rate of one to the exponent minus two using the binary cross entropy loss with the ADA optimizer. And we compare our results with the traditional conditional random field refinement strategy. We validate the framework for the pancreas and spleen segmentation problem. For the pancreas, we use the dataset from the NIH, and we use 45 volumes to train the CNM, and we refine 10, 20 volumes. For the spleen, we use the spleen dataset from the medical image segmentation decathlon. And in this case, we use 26 volumes to train the CNM, and we refine nine CT volumes. The table here shows the dice score performance of the refinement compared with the original CNM output for the pancreas and spleen segmentation tasks. As we can see, the GCN refinement strategy has a better performance compared with the original CNM output and also has a better performance compared with the traditional condition random field refinement strategy for both pancreas and spleen segmentation tasks. In the case of the pancreas, we achieved a 1% improvement compared with the original CNN, and in the case of the spleen, we achieve a 2% improvement compared with the original CNN output. In our experiments, we also evaluate the impact of the uncertainty threshold. As you, as you can remember, the uncertainty threshold controls the point that will be labeled or unlabeled in the graph. In this sense, we evaluate five different uncertainty thresholds coming from very low values to very high values to see how this affects the performance of the refinement strategy. As you can see in this table, 
the performance doesn't suffer the of a lot of variation for different uncertainty thresholds. One reason for this could be that there is a clear division between low uncertainty and high uncertainty elements in, in the graph predictions. Based on this, we decide to conduct a second experiment training the, or the CNN model with a lower amount of data. We train again the CNN using this time only 10 volumes for the pancreas segmentation problem and only 9 volumes for the spleen segmentation problem. And we evaluate again the refinement improvement of the CRF and the GCM based strategy. As you can see in the dice score presented in the table, we still have a consistent increment in the performance for the, for the GCN compared with the condition random field and with the original CNN output. This figure shows some examples of the CNN original CNN prediction in the, in the top and the GCN refinement in the bottom. True positives are, are indicated by green, false negative in white and false positive in red. As you can see, for example, in the first column, our refinement strategy can eliminate some false positive regions originally uh, present in the CNN prediction. And also from the second column, we can see how some false negative elements are recovered. However, in the fourth column, we can see that the network can also produce some, some small region of false positive components. This is our, these are the results for the spleen segmentation problem. Again, we can see in the first three columns how some false negative are recovered with the GCN strategy. And also we can see again in the fourth column one small region of false positive that was generated after the refinement strategy. If we take a look to the main components that are used to build the graph, we have here for example the original CNN output, the expectation and the entropy, together with the refinement obtained from the GCN. As you can see that uh, false positive regions comes from a point in, that is present in the expectation for a group of, of segmented boxes uh, present in the expectation. For our last experiment, we compare the performance of the GCN refinement with the expectation obtained from the uncertainty analysis. For this, we compute the relative improvement between the GCN expectation for every single volume of the pancreas segmentation task. We make this comparison using 45 volumes to train the CNN in figure A and 10 volumes to train the CNN in figure B. And we can see here when the, when the CNN is trained on 45 volumes, we have that the improvement of the GCN compared with expectation is similar or a little bit lower than the expectation output. In three volumes here, we can see a better performance for the GCN strategy. This change when we, when we see figure B when the CNN was trained only on 10 volumes, we can see that we have more, more volumes that have a better performance compared with the expectation point here. One reason for this could be that we, when we train the model on 45 volumes, we have a lower uncertainty and we obtain a more reliable expectation. In contrast, when we train our model with only 10, 10 volumes, in these cases, the expectation, we could not rely on the expectation and the experiments suggest that the GCN refinement has better results when we are working in high uncertainty, uh, in high uncertainty scenarios. As concluding remarks, we have shown a method to define an uncertainty based partial label graph representation of city data. We also have shown an application of GCNs in a segmentation refinement task for organ segmentation. And also we have employed MCDO, Monte Carlo Dropout Strategy, for the uncertainty analysis. And we also have found that the expectation could be a good choice for well trained models. However, the GCN refinement strategy showed better performance in low data regimen. Also, our work is simple and modular and allows future analysis of different uncertain estimation methods since we can change the Monte Carlo Dropout Strategy for another uncertainty estimation methodologies. And also future, future research can be focused on different weighting and connectivity strategies and also in the inclusion of prior knowledge in the graph construction. That could be all for my part and thank you for your attention.